we're back into it, about a few weeks away from uh, the car thing. Done little bits and pieces around the workshop and other jobs we've got to catch up with, but the Tirana is here and uh, we're going to very shortly crack into that and get a start on it, Mick. Yeah, Tirana's rocked up. Matt's dropped it off for us. Uh, but we, first of all, we just want to say thanks for subscribing to our channel, guys. Uh, yep. It's pretty cool of you guys to follow along. Um, and this is uh, part one of my OBS Chev build. So we're going to show what's been going on with it. I did lose a little bit of footage from the start, but uh, I've got enough here to, to show what we're doing. Yeah, should, should be an interesting build along the way. Yeah, it'll be a good build, this. I'm still not sure if I'm going to like lower it or lift it. I haven't made my mind up yet and or to airbag it. So that'll all come as we, as we go along. A lot of these builds as you do them, they all unfold and you go from one idea to the next and you'll hum and ah and change things and you know work it out as you go with it. Yeah, and with the colour and all that sort of stuff, that's all the fun of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what else? Well, Dad, well you, got anything you want to say? Yeah, Tirana guys. Um, that should be a real nice build for you guys to watch. Be very interesting. It's it's had an extensive uh, amount of bodywork over the years, and not so good bodywork. But we'll show you how we're going to correct all those issues. Yeah, we'll get a little bit more in depth with the metal work, and um, now that we're starting to get the hang of it, using the camera and stuff, and so we'll show more what's involved with all that sort of stuff. And yeah, should come up good. You should, you should you guys should really like the way that we go about this. You'll probably learn heaps more um, as we do these builds. But this. Is a very nice little build, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a trick car when it's done. So uh, that's probably it for now, and Mick will um, give you the intro into his Chev and, and go from there. Yeah, all right, that's it. Let's get stuck into the Chev, guys, and um, yeah, all let's good. go. Hey guys, so uh, any of you guys out there with an OBS and you're having trouble with your engine mounts or they're buggered like, like mine are, as you can see, I've just shoved some aluminium blocks in there. But yeah, if you guys have got problems getting them out, which they are a bit of a mission, um, what I've actually done is, is weld the nuts in the other end. Uh, it's a bit of a mission to weld up in there. It can be done. So, with them being welded, it works out really good. So in the future, because I am going to keep this ute, um, I can, if if they pack it in, I can just throw in new ones without going inside the frame. As you guys would know, if you've done it yourselves. Still a bit warm, so I'm just taking my time taking taking them out. Threads seem really good though. So yeah, guys, definitely they go. And I've also finished with my steering. All right, guys. So the first engine mount's all in. It's fitting nice. And uh, with those welded nuts on the other side, worked out a treat. Uh, so now with all this, uh, now I've got to weld up that little bit of a mess and um, just sort out all this wiring, so I want to get it out of the way before I start doing a lot of welding like that. Um, it's got a, a security system in it, an aftermarket one. Uh, what are they called? Uh, I think they're Mongoose or something like that. Yeah, here it is here. Yeah, Mongoose security system, so I'm gonna pull all that out. I don't want that in it um, just because there's that much wiring going everywhere so I've just started to 
cut it all out, sort out what I've got here, and um, get get it back to factory. Because instead of that, uh, the security system, I'm actually going to just put a tracker in it when it's done, and um, the track is now work a treat. So. I've also got rust in the floor and I think I think why it has rusted the actual heater box or something the water's been leaking into that firewall that's why I'm fixing everything but yeah we've got these oh here's the airline here I did cut them before the zip ties that is like a zip tied on See the dodgy paint job it's had to just peeling off. So yeah, there's that wiring that's gone, just another mess that I don't want. spraying the chassis you know it's all, all in here I'm not doesn't really matter the firewall I'll be respraying it so this is the rough stage at the moment because I'm pre-fitting everything good oh and as I always say would you or wouldn't you the old safeties uh, always if you're grinding and stuff always tell people to wear your safeties especially after my missus um, her grandfather lost an eye from using a grinder so yeah uh, with metal so yeah that's um, priorities but would you or wouldn't you guys they come up sweet so now so looking good i'll give it a light sand with a orbital, a little bit of idea over it and uh clean the other side up as well and put some epoxy primer but it's got that nice strength back into it and that uh factory look so yeah that's good um i'll throw the uh put the control arm back in as well and then i'll come back to this side and i've got to do the same i need to weld a little bit on that one. All right guys, so I'm just gonna lower the left hand lower control arm and then I can get my hand up into the chassis frame just there where the engine mount goes. I'll show you guys once I lower this down and then I'll do the same thing. I'll weld the nuts up inside like I did with this side. Hey 
guys, so they're welded in now. Um, they're well and truly welded in, which is good, because I don't want them to break off trying to undo them later on or any of that. Oh, it got me a beauty. I got two good burns out of it. But that's why I say, where your safety stuff, you know, it's always good to have your safety gear. I was just trying to be quick and get it done. But, you can never get away with it, but here's the burns. So yeah, put the aloe vera on them and um, we won't be doing that again. But anyway guys, we'll, I'll just put the camera up and show you, show you guys what I was talking about. Yeah, they're nice and welded in. Anyway guys, we'll move on with the next part. Alright, go up slow. Right guys, so that went really well. Cab come off nice. Um, so now I can get to the chassis and uh, sandblast it all and all that. But f what we need to do is now, there's a couple of little things, a couple of little bends on the chassis that I'm not happy with. It's a bit sus. Don't know if it's just some forklift lifting it in the past. Uh, one mount here's on the piss. And for some reason, they've used a, an odd style packer. And as you can see under here, they've packed this bed up. So it indicates that they've tried to hide something. And as Mick said, there's a couple of little, um, as you can see in the chassis, a couple of funny bits. And that's an indication it's had a bit of damage somewhere. So we have a bit of a closer look. Looks like they've tried to make up a rear cross member, dodgy as. That'll be gone, we'll have to get rid of that. There's a couple of creases too in the bottom of the rail there. Yeah. So I want to get them out straight and all that up. But first, uh, we're going to do a couple of measurements. Yeah, I think to be safe we'll do, a, um, we'll do a couple of diagonal measurements across the front of the chassis and down the chassis rails. So uh, we'll just walk over here and show you guys. Now this is part of the car and line of measuring system which we haven't used for probably oh, be quite a while, probably 12 months, at least 18 months we've been doing some uh, other work. But this is just what they call an upright part of the overhead measuring system. So we'll turn this into a, um, a trammel so we can get some diagonals across that chassis. But um, as you can see there, down to the uh, very fine increments of measurements. So we'll just chuck these little bits and pieces together for you guys so you can see as, as you do you chuck that on and that'll slide along and we'll turn this into a trammel then we'll put what we call an upright measuring tube now normally that's 
under the car and it'll go up into a jig hole under the car when the measuring bridge and system's all set up. But in this instance, we'll drop that in there like that. And then we'll use one of these little finer pointers, which sits down in there to complete the little measuring bridge that I'm about to make up. So then we can adjust that up down to wherever we want. And we'll do the same on the other end. And then, you've, as you can see guys, you've got the measurements. Now you can set that on the edge of that to wherever you want to get an exact measurement right through there. So at the moment we'll just set this up and then we'll, we'll throw it on the front of this truck and we'll see where we're at with it. It'll give us a very... You've got measurements on the, yeah. on the side as well. Yep. And just to let you know guys how well these things are made, all these upright tubes, they're all made out of gun barrel material. Um, everything's milled machine to the mill. And these are all other different little, um, for measuring heads of bolts, up into jig holes and suspension components. And if you pop around this side, these are uh, what we call measuring bridges. They'll all come off the, uh, the cabinet and then they just extend out. And they've got tape measures both ends. And they lay on a, a bridge that runs right under the car on the, on the car line of bed. We'll go into it in more detail another day, guys, but we're just going to give you a little bit of an insight into how we can do some quick diagonal measurements to give us a, um, a heads up just to see where we're at fairly quickly. So like I said, we'll chuck these little things on. And as Mick's explained, there's the measure on that. So you've got height measurement, you've got width measurement. And the old story, you know, when you hear people say, oh, that car's had an accident, it's no good anymore. That's a load of rubbish. If the car's repaired correctly, when you use one of these um, car aligners and there are other, other jigs out there, you can get it back to factory, if not even better at times, if you have the bit of know-how and patience to do it. So I'll give you an idea how this will change things. And, you get a, and this gives you a, a sort of fairly accurate measurement when you do a diagonal. There's different ways to do this, but normally, these are really spot on. So you find a jig hole, for instance, like here or here, you pick somewhere. Obviously there, there's the same there on, on this particular truck. And then look for one back down the rails or depending how far you want to measure along the rails. So we'll, we'll have a bit of a look around here now and see what we can find. We'll take a measurement from one side to the other and that'll just show us how good or bad the front of this truck is. Okay guys, so I've just finished doing some measurements and the left hand front bracket, as you can see here, is slightly out. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is repair that and you can see where it's pushed in. So what, what's happened, the radiator support, it's hit in the front here, like right there in the middle and then it's pushed back, pushed those brackets back. The right hand one's not too bad. It's a little bit I've got to push out. So I'll repair this bracket. The rail's pretty good. It's about two mil out, which is which is nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll push that out of it. That's not a problem. Um, but besides that, it's pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do now. I've just set up the big slide hammer on it. Got the oxy and um, I'll heat it up a little bit and then pull it out.
Alright guys, so we've got a little bit here we're straightening as well. That's just from the forklift. It's not very it's not too bad. But I just want to make sure it's all nice and straight so when it's all painted it's gonna look schmick under here. So we're gonna heat it up a tiny bit, not too much heat, just a little bit. And we'll knock that out. Put that over the top of it like that. And we'll just stop it from marking it. Decent punch in there. And when it's hot, we'll give her a, a bang down and it won't mark the chassis that way. Right, right. Now, we'll get some heat going. You get the, the old heat on there a little bit. Like I was saying before, we don't want to get it too too hot when it's just like blazing red. If you do that a few too many times, it's not good for the for the chassis rail. You don't want any cracks in there or anything. Ready? Yep. Set, go. Yes. Might have went down a little bit too much, maybe not. Yeah, it's got that egg out of it. Oh, could have had a bit more. Yeah, needed a little bit more. Show us the strike. That's that guy, so Alright guys, so we'll do this section now. Same old deal. When you're doing this sort of work, don't overcook the steel. That's the trick to it. Once you do, you basically ruin what you're trying to do, so you just be very careful of your heat. Watch the colour, watch what the steel is doing. Yeah. 
very hard. Yeah, no, it's come up pretty oh, good. Story. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty good. Show us your hammer in. Bloody exhaust in the road. Yeah. About it. Nice. Another thing too, guys, like we're not having strengthening it, so we don't want to put cold water on there or none of that. Just naturally let it cool back down. All right, guys, another day on the Chev. Uh, Rob's come and he's gonna pull my screens out for me. He's the man at doing this stuff, so I'll, I'll let Robo do it. I'll let you get stuck into it, mate. No worries, mate. How's it going, Rob? Yeah, good, mate. Getting there. On the home stretch now. On the home stretch? So I would have cut the screens out myself, guys, but I didn't want to crack them, so that's why I've got Rob to do it. He's the man. And they're not easy, these screens, are they, Rob, to get no, out? No, Very low, and uh, you don't want to wreck the encapsulation, which is the mould around the outside. Okay. Which is glued on from factory onto the glass before we even get it. So All you got to right. be careful you don't wreck that. Yeah, that's definitely a mission. I have done them myself in the past, but they've been cracked, so it hasn't hasn't been a issue. But yeah, this is a bit more of a you need to know what you're doing. So Robbo's the man for the job. We will probably put a new screen in, but I just want to keep this one. It's genuine. So just, we'll just see when it comes to that time. Hey Rob, what do you reckon? Should put yeah, it in? you should polish up all right. It's a bit dirty, but I think it'll be all right. And then we've got to try to get the rear screen out. That one's going to be a little bit harder, hey Robbo? So we're just going to have to see see how we go with that it's definitely it's definitely one of those jobs where you do need to know what you're doing especially putting them back in it's another another bloody special little job because if you don't know what you're doing you're going to get water leaks and Yeah, we've just got to get it up vertical, mate, and then lift her up. Beautiful, mate. Oh, guys, that went really well. Thanks for that, Robbo. Bloody, no worries, mate. you saved my screen too. A bit of a battle, but we got her out. Yeah, no, that's awesome, hey. Now you can see there they didn't clean the screen. The urethane's just pulling off the, the glass. Oh wow, it is too. Gosh, so, that yeah. wasn't even sealed. No, so in an accident that'll just fly straight out. Alright. Put her away and keep it for the next time you want to go to put her in, mate. Yeah, no, nah, thanks for that, mate. Alright. We'll start on the rear, eh? Alright guys, Robbo's into the rear window. How's it going, Rob? Coming yeah, out alright? It's actually coming out quite easy, mate, because it's tough and glass, so you can put a little bit more pressure on it. Yeah, nice. And it's an aluminium frame, so... Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. Makes life a bit easier. Yeah. But uh, it's going good. What's awesome about these windows, guys, I can open them up. In the middle there, which is pretty cool.
These ones should be all right for you, mate. These are just a bolt-in. Okay. Screwing from the in, in, inside it, so just undo it and they should come out nicely. Yeah, I the can do that. The brackets there should be right to stay there while you paint it. So. All right, yeah, too easy, mate. No worries. And um, all I can say is you made that look easy. Yeah, no worries, mate. We'll get you back, Robin, when I'm finished with all the paintwork and stuff, and then you can throw them back in for me. No problem, mate. Pleasure. All right, mate, bloody beautiful. Awesome, Rob, thanks for doing my screens, no mate. Worries, mate. No and um, we'll see you when you come back. But guys, if you want to get your windscreens replaced and um, guaranteed awesome work, and he does a great job. And uh, Rob, how far do you go? Toowoomba? Yeah, Darling Downs area, mate. Yep. Yeah. Gatton, you name it. Crow's Nest. Back yeah. to Mill Marin. Oakey. Yep. All that, so. Awesome, yeah. mate. Yeah. No worries. All right, guys. So if you need anything done, give him a call. That's his number. And that's a wrap for today. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Thanks mate. Later. See you later. See you, mate. All right, guys, thanks for watching part one with the OBS build. And a shout out to Robbo, mate, for coming and doing my windscreens. He did an awesome job. And um, we'll catch you guys in the next episode and we'll be starting the Tirana. So catch you later.